Terror Dares, hello, hello, hello. This is Ashen Cody Terror Dares. Coming at you live. Christine's Praise first. the Lord. Christina's always first. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hi, Christina. Awesome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is uh, Business Supernaturally. And uh, we've got a great program for you today, a great live for you today. We're talking about two types of money today, two types of money. So you want to stay tuned for that. Let me see if I can pull up the comments and give people some shout outs. Carly, how are you today? I'm blessed. You're a little how are low. You? A little low. You good? A little low. No, I'm just saying. I'm just wondering. What? You look Is a little, my chin off the bottom? You look, a little, little, you look a little low, that's all. You look a little low. Do I need to go? I could go a bit lower. Try and balance you out a little bit. Look, that's it. Hang on. <laughs> Don't look down my top, though. No, that would fine. be unfortunate. It's almost tipping over now. There <laughs> we go. How's that? Is that what? Excuse us while we feel around. I'm a little feel here. So, praise the Lord. Give us a shout out. Let us know who's watching from where. We'd love to uh, give you a shout out. And um, this is Business Supernaturally. Um, Ashley and Carly Territors. I'll turn the sound off here. Praise all. Pam's watching. Hi, Pam. Christina's watching. Let me pull up uh, YouTube as well. Abigail's We've got YouTube in and Facebook. Is that London watching. in the UK or London in Canada? There's a London in, uh, there's a London in um, Le uh, Kentucky, is there, isn't it? Is there? London, Kentucky. Oh, yeah, we yeah. drove through there, didn't we? Yeah, there's a London, Kentucky. Beaumont, as well, California. Like Robin's in Beaumont. Scott Beck is watching. Abigail's is in the UK. London okay. in the UK. And uh, is that Terrell's Terrell's where you're watching from. He's also in London. We'll yeah. give you a shout out. Where are you watching from? People? That's awesome. Let us know, let us know. That's awesome. Okay, so are we live on YouTube or not? I think so, because people are waving at you. Are they? I but think that's an answer. Say, look, Maryland, look YouTube. Lydia. Why can I not see our YouTube video live? It's my question. Canada, Indiana, yeah, come on. Oklahoma. While you're figuring out whether people we're actually live or not, I can tell you that people are live because I'm reading their comments. They're live on YouTube. Are you yes. sure they're live on yes. YouTube? Okay, how goes? Ah, oh, there we go. I found us on YouTube. I found wow. us. Praise the Lord. Okay, I found us. So, welcome, welcome, welcome. We're very excited today. This could be live. Michael There's a couple of things. Hi, Michael. A couple of things we're going to do. We're going to do. Um, we're going to talk about two types of money today. There's definitely two types of money. And did you know? Let, listen to this. Lack in your business or lack in your personal finances. This is business supernatural. So we're going to concentrate mainly on businesses, small business. Um, you know, making money God's way, prosperity God's way. But lack in your business mm -hmm. does not come from money you don't have, it comes from money you do have that you shouldn't have. Ooh. Bam, there you go. Hi, Terry. Uh, bam, hi, Praveen from India. Good. So yeah, oh, we're going to look at two types of money today. And we're also going to pray for you. There's going to be a supernatural impartation. We love to pray for you, especially our partners. We pray for you. We pray for increase in your business, your mm -hmm. small business, and everything you're doing. Pastor Kent Ward's on. Congratulations Pastors. on your new book. It's a great book, Kent. I got it in the yes. mail. This saves me a text message. Ken, I got your book in the mail. Thank you. I love it. Great um, matte finish. I'd, if I had a copy here, I'd hold it up, but it's yeah. actually at my house. You know, anyway, great book. Pastors Kent and Liz doing a great job in Overcomers Church there in Perryville, Missouri. Who's going to add to that? I was going to say, um, there's a few people on here that have just released books. Yeah. <laughs> Moi. Moi. Carly's got a new book. <laughs> you haven't got a copy of it. No, you should let us know if you've got books. Um, Delene's just put out a new book. I saw that on social media, so okay. congratulations. And Pastor Ken. Pastor Ken's so new um, book. I'm just really excited. You know, um, if if you've ever written a book and had it published, you'll know that there's this moment of like this is really exciting and all and also at the same time simultaneous terror. It's like giving realizing birth. that, that, like giving that birth? your innermost thoughts are like they're in print for everyone to watch for all of eternity. You can't read. take them back then. They're, no, out, they're, in, they're, they're in black in and white. They're in print. So, uh oh. So it is. It you do you make yourself really vulnerable when you put things in a book. Yeah, so yeah. it's a huge um, undertaking and congratulations um, for those authors that have just released books, especially if it's your first. Amen. Man. Hi, Jack from, Hi, Jack from Phoenix. Thanks, Kent. That's very kind. We do have some books. I've got two books out now, and Carly has like four now, right? Three? Yeah, you got to catch three. up. Carly has, no, you're only three. I have, three. I have four. You can't count Hannah and the Beanstalk. I wrote it. You're not. There's, you got, Hannah and the Beanstalk. Come on. The children's book. Is it a book? It's a book. It's a children's book. I wrote book. it. It's a book. It's a children's book, Carly. You can't claim it. You're claiming that. Are you claiming it? Oh, man. She's claiming hand on the beans. So Kai's got four, I've got three. Okay. Or two, actually. Only two. But anyway, praise the Lord. Only so, two. Only two books. All I've got. Two no, books. Got I know. Two books. We are also going to answer your questions today. So we're, we're going to talk about two types of money in a minute. This is very important. Get your Bibles. We're talking about business supernaturally and yeah. how you can increase your business. Two types of money we're going to talk about. We're also going to uh, pray for you. We're going to release an impartation today. And we're going to answer your questions. If you've got any questions, put them in the comments below. And we will be, uh, get fed them on the iPad from our staff. Praise the Lord. They feed us the questions, which is awesome. We have YouTube and Facebook watching. So uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Praise the Lord. Thanks, Ken's giving me a shout out for my book. Thank you. I appreciate so, that. Ghana. It's a quick question there. And, from... and Antoinette. Antoinette is in Ghana. Hi, Antoinette from Ghana. Chris is asking, do you have to publish if you write? So there's a couple of different ways that you can launch a book. One of those is to self-publish a mm -hmm. book. You can write it yourself. Yes, absolutely. You should write it yourself. 
and or some people use Ghostwriter, but write it yourself. And then you can either use a self-publisher like um, Amazon. Mm -hmm. um, there's lots of different, I mean, I could go through lots of different, you can just Google um, self-publishing, right? And basically you send and, you know, you design the cover or have a friend design the cover and you right. send it and they print. It's very inexpensive and you can usually do small quantities at once, right? right. But all the distribution is down to you. All mm -hmm. the marketing is down to you. You get 100% of the profits. Now, if you use a publisher, you have to submit a manuscript and be chosen by a publisher. So mm -hmm. that's a bit of a different process. You get less of a, you get a royalty for your books and then they take on all the marketing expenses. So. I actually, it. it's like we actually did it the wrong way around. My first book, our first books we wrote, and actually the publisher, the owner of the mm -hmm. publishing house, flew on his private jet to come to us and asked us if we would let him publish our books. We suffered the wrong way around, but you know, it's a supernatural favour, praise God. But anyway, yeah. either way, we do sell more on our own, I think, than for our publishers usually. We actually sell on conferences just, and things like that. It just depends. If you're yeah. starting out and you write a book um, and you actually want people to read it, um, it's a good a good thing is to go is, is to submit it to a publisher now yeah. you know you might have to try a few different publishers um, but you will get it ultimately you'll get it in front of more people yeah um, unless you have your own platform uh, presence in some way if you have your own following um, then if you self publish then you've already got distribution but always think about just writing the book is just the first stage to getting yeah. it out there so that's, that's right. what publish that's the key role that publishers can play if you don't have much of a platform yourself. That's right. Good question. I think Chris asked the question. Good question, Chris. Mary's in, in uh, Claremont, Florida. Uh, Jenny's on here. Uh, Turid's on here from California. Hi, Turid. Uh, Praveen says that when he reads our books, he hears the English accent. Oh, my gosh, you poor thing. There you go. In fact, Carly's <laughs> just done the audible version of her book. That'll be out soon, All Is Not Lost, and it's got extra bonus I did the bonus. interview. It's I didn't bonus read features. the whole thing. It's got bonus I had features. someone read the... The most I did interviews to go with it. Come on, thanks for sharing, Sharon. Sharon shared, Stephanie shared. So if you want to share, go ahead on Facebook, press share on your Facebook wall right there. There's people that need to see this. And then also on, on uh, YouTube, don't forget to give a thumbs up. When you press thumbs up, YouTube goes, oh, this must be interesting. And it pushes it out to more people. And also on YouTube, you can press share, take that little link there and actually post that or you know, text it to your friends mm -hmm. or email it to your friends or whatever you want to do, or even put it on your Facebook. So mm -hmm. share. On, uh, on Facebook and YouTube, and on YouTube, don't forget that thumbs up. It does make a difference. When you give a thumbs up, it makes a difference, praise God. Thank you, there, the thumbs are going up now, look, see? The, the thumbs uh, are increasing, are, are praise God. 10, subscribers? Very close to 10,000 subscribers. We are very, very close. Uh, we are on, let me see here, I'll have to go back here to see, we're on 9,960 subscribers. So we're only 40 wow. sub subs away, subs they call them, Kai. They're young people, they call them subs. How many subs you got? Well, I can, I only, say, well, I can eat, I can eat a six inch. I've got a six all inch, I've got a six inch meatball <laughs> marinara sub, but no, they say, no dad, what about your subs? Okay, your subs, how many subs you got? Okay, so the subs are, we actually have 9,000, 600, uh, no, sorry, 9,900, no, 900, no, yeah, 9,000. 960. I'm not very good at math. <laughs> it's I'm terrible really confession. I know. You know, you know you my teacher? 9,960 So we only need 40 subs. You know, my teacher, when I was growing up, said, said um, I wasn't very good at math. We called it maths in England. Not very good at math. And I said, look, miss, I don't need to learn <laughs> maths, we say in England. I say, I don't have to learn maths because um, I could just do it on a calculator. Why learn your times table? Why learn maths? Just do it on a calculator. And she said, there it is. She said, you're not always going to carry a calculator around in your back pocket. Well, how'd you like me now, miss? Carry my phone around everywhere, praise God. So, you know oh, what, we carry case. phone case because I'm actually using my phone for the live, so. So anyway, um, I do carry a calculator around in my oh back my pocket. Gosh. So Miss Maths teacher, wherever you are, watching, if you are still alive, then um, Did they call you Terides in school? Terides? No, only when I was bad. Okay, so this is Business Supernaturally. We're very excited. Two types of money. This Get your lot. Bibles. <laughs> we are ready for this. Get your Bibles. I was in trouble a lot, actually. <laughs> get your Bibles. I caused many a teacher to get some grey hairs. Looking back, I feel like I should go and apologise. Yes to my teachers. They're out there now. This is actually public I was, apology. I used to torment teachers, especially substitute teachers. We'd torment them. The goal would be, me and my friends would be, can we make the teacher cry? That's and it's, isn't that terrible? Hi, Amber. Can Amber's I, watching. I don't know why Cindy's anyone watching would, in want to be a teacher in like isn't high school terrible? or middle school. Because, it's just terrible. Man, you must have the grace of God on you. It's just, it's just <laughs> terrible. So anyway. Big respect. Let me just check we've got any, any announcements here. We've got a great uh, testimony there. Let me um, pull that testimony back up. I just saw that. Testimony just flashed by. And um, yeah, let me just pull that back up. There's a testimony going on here from Healing is Here. Can I tell you about Healing is Here real quickly before we get into awesome. teaching? We're just about getting into teaching. Grab your Bibles. We're just allowing people time to get on. Tell us about Healing is Here, can Yeah, I? we had a great time. There was um, oh, hundreds and hundreds of people that were, were healed of mm -hmm. all different kinds of things. I had one lady come up to me and she had um, she had metal metal rods or something in her neck and, and she was and she couldn't wasn't able to move her head around and she mm. was 
there at the product table displaying, like, look, I can do this. Come on. She was all excited. You know, um, and Kylie got to minister with Richard Roberts, who's uh, mm -hmm. Oral Roberts' son. How powerful is that? I mean, this is so powerful. And Oral Roberts was telling us that his, um, Richard Roberts was telling us his dad, Oral Roberts, which really many consider as like the father of the healing movement. I mean, he taught healing. He, he was a, a breakthrough in healing and, and really brought about supernatural healing to the body of Christ. And um, Richard was telling us that he traveled all over the world with his dad, watched him pray, and he prayed for so many people, hundreds of thousands, probably millions of people. He, he had to have shoulder, shoulder surgery. Out. He had to have shoulder surgery from <laughs> laying hands intense. on him. Isn't that intense? Anyway, this he healing testimony. Lay hands on himself. Lay hands on himself. I know. <laughs> oftentimes, healing evangelists find it more difficult to receive healing themselves than they do other people. That's another whole lesson. This is business ah. supernatural, so we're not watching this. We're not going to teach a this gift right now. Versus authority. So, hello, Mum. And Mum's on here. Okay, so Mary says, uh, this is a great testimony. Mary says, um, she received her healing from a word of knowledge from Carly uh, that Carly had at the Healing Is Here um, conference. What Praise the Lord. So, yeah, from, let us know, uh, Mary. Mary. Tell us what, if, if, you, if you want to, if it's personal, it's personal. Uh, Janine, Jan, Janine, Janine, I think Janine, Emily, Janine. is Janine, 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 Janine. Janine is uh, from Nabi Namibia. 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 Welcome, yeah. Namibia. We have uh, people from South Africa here. I saw. Um, um, we were getting excited earlier. We had a director's meeting this South morning Africa. and we were planning our um, South African, African tour. tour. So yeah, that's, that's happening. In not too not two too months. distant future. Two yes, months? just two months, I think. Yeah, so, uh, just so you know, on event wise. Oh, hang on. Amber's got a testimony. testimony as well. She's, Last power hour, I was healed from six months long of migraines, and my son Corey started healing from psychosis. And I can't read the rest of Praise the message the because it's got cut off. Oh, you, you want to put it on here? Can you see all the words? Yeah, here we go. Amber. Bam. 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 Oh, okay. healing from psychosis and sleeplessness. That awesome. is awesome, Amber. Awesome. That was powerful. Crazy. I'm excited. We've got Pamela from... Love Bro hearing your testimonies. Pamela from Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. We've got Isaac uh, from uh, Isaac. Kenya. Praise God. So real quickly, I'm gonna get, and then we're going to get to the teaching. Real quickly, um, in two weekends, not this weekend, next weekend. This weekend, we're moving. Moving dun, to dun, ministry, y'all. Hey, real we quickly. We can't show you around because it looks like a mess. It's a mess. We're moving. That's we're moving. why we've got like... We're against the wall. Some random map. We're behind against the wall. Us, no, well, it's pretty cool. We got you got the United we, Kingdom so up here. And... We're going to be going here. That's right. And here. And, and across over, here, over there. That's right. And and somewhere here. in there, Zimbabwe. Yes. Yeah, isn't that cool? <laughs> so anyway, we're um, we're going to Africa. But I was just going to say real quickly. Um, I wasn't planning to do this, but we are packing at the moment because this weekend we're moving our ministry offices. And we are very close. We do have some more construction bills to pay, but they are very close to finished con construction. They're finished enough for us to move in. So we can actually move in, but they've still got a lot more to do. So if you've sown into the uh, construction project, if you've sown into the uh, HQ project, thank you, thank you, thank you. If you haven't sown in, now is your time to sow in. It's uh, teradez.com forward slash HQ for headquarters, HQ. So in, or you're just going to give. So right now, praise God, we're believing for uh, about $300,000 extra. We, yes. we Our immediate need is about $55,000 that we have to pay for the rest of construction. And also, just so. be in prayer, y'all, because we, our ministry is in the mountains. Yep. And we've had some legendary rain, mm -hmm. and um, it has washed the driveway out. The driveway and it's a, a steep, washed. winding driveway. So the rain, because it's dirt, has washed, like, deep ruts. Yeah, but it's so okay. A moving truck cannot... Tr Travail. Travail. Tra but traverse. It, traverse. It. traverse. It's okay. In my truck so. or in the Jeep, you can just like four wheel up the up the pair. And the reason why you have to go up this driveway is because the, the property's been built on the top of the hill, which yeah. makes gives you spectacular views of Pikes Peak. But and it's actually beautiful, but the it's driveway is too far to hike up. And they we have to, have to get the driveway. across there. So um, We've got to fix the driveway. Your donations today are going to help us access fix the, the ministry driveway. property. <laughs> so we have fix the driveway. <laughs> we have an immediate need to actually build driveway. a culvert to um, to stop the driveway washing out and make sure that we have access. That's right. So that's like, we actually kind of need a small miracle. So if yeah. you'd be in prayer about that, that'd be awesome. Shalom. Uh, you know, Shalom is in Ethiopia. Hi, Shalom. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. And uh, Deb is in Virginia. So... Anyway, we 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 paid cash for the properties, you know, and all we're doing now is believing God for the rest of the money to come in to pay for the constructions. If you haven't sown yet, go ahead and sow. For everyone, uh, if you go across to terrorist.com forward slash HQ, you'll see that the suggested donation is a thousand. I know many of you have done a thousand. If you donate a thousand, we've actually got something special for our thousand dollar or more givers. Yeah. Praise God, we've got something special. We're not going to reveal it yet. We've got something special. Have a sleeve, Carly. Mary says she was healed of a prolapse. Praise that's the Lord, that's, that's awesome. That is a big deal. That, that is just great. things are moving back into place. That is awesome. I think that's I saw Trish go on here from uh, New Zealand um, somewhere yeah hi Triska from New Zealand praise the Lord so that's great thanks for letting us know that so okay today is what business, are you teaching on today business supernaturally business supernaturally, business supernaturally and um, I'm, I'm excited. just here to look cute no, I said to Carly, That's come and it. join me. Everyone likes it when you're on here, Carly. You know He's got it. the so brains when it comes to They know business. they do. Business supernaturally, praise God. So, Anyway, okay, grab your Bibles. There's two types of money. 
Okay, we're talking about two types of money today. There is devotional money and there's transactional money. Devotional money and transactional money, okay? So this is a popular verse. I know everyone knows this verse, but if you've got your Bibles, turn to it. Anyway, we're going to start right here in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. You know, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. It's the blessings is of the one of my, That's right. It's one, no, this one is Oh, isn't. chapter 8. Yeah. Chapter 8. Is one of, in fact, what happened was, is my first book that came out, I was signing them, and they said, oh actually, gosh. you need to actually put something a bit inspirational. You can't just put your name. Do something, like put a Bible verse or something. And I was I'm looking. glad you weren't around when I just signed 200, 200 copies of my book yesterday. I just signed 200 <laughs> copies of a book. But I never, me a lot longer. I never signed books before. I didn't know what to do. They said, well, you're meant to put like a Bible verse in or something. Something you spiritual. Know. So I thought, well, what's my favorite? One of my favorite verses when it comes to prosperity. Well, I like Deuteronomy 8, 18. And that's what I'm going to read in a minute. I also like Deuteronomy 28, 8. Deuteronomy 28, 8 says, you are blessed in the works. You are blessed he, he commands the blessing on your storehouses and all the works of your hands. He blesses you in the land that he's given you. So that's a good mm -hmm. verse. And also like Deuteronomy 8.18, which you're going to read in a minute, you should remember the Lord your God, for it's he who gives you the power to get wealth. Now, I like both of them verses. For which one should I put down? And I got them confused. I wrote down Deuteronomy 28.18. So I got mixed up. And Deuteronomy 28.18 so actually <laughs> says, you are cursed in your body, you're cursed <laughs> in the field, you're cursed in the fruit of your womb. Cursed so in your loins, isn't it? If you've got, yeah, in not, not in your loins. It says, well, one translation is loins. It says, cursed the fruit of your womb. So if you've got, listen, <laughs> If you was one of those people, the first maybe 10 or 20 people to get my book and I signed it, Deuteronomy 28, 18. That was a 18, special edition. That was a mistake. They're worth imagine, more. I can imagine someone getting that book and going home and going, hey, honey, get the kids, gather up the kids. I've just been moment. to see Brother Ashley at his conference. It's got he wrote us. a special prayer in this. He wrote a Bible verse in yeah. his book yeah. and it's for our family. Quick, this is the verse, turn our on family. The camera. Turn on the camera. Little Johnny, get your Bible out. Brother Ashley has written us a verse. This is going to be our family verse right now. Brother Johnny, yeah. hey, Brother Ashley's written this for Going us. Going on the fridge. Little Johnny, read that verse. Read that verse of Johnny. He gets his Bible out. Deuteronomy 28, 18. You are cursed by the fruit. Your fruit of your womb is cursed. You're cursed. In it's like, oh, no. So I apologize. That is not the verse we're looking at today. The verse we're looking at today is Deuteronomy 8, 18. This is business supernaturally. We're going to get into some business things right here. Deuteronomy no, we are, really. 8, 18. Just hold. Stay here with Here we go. Us. Ready for this? There's more. You should remember the Lord your God, for it's he who gives you the power to get wealth. So first of all, let me just clarify this real quick. This is business supernaturally. God has given you the power to get wealth. I don't care how old you are, how young you are. I don't care where you was born. I don't care where you're growing up. I know people in the poorest nations of the world that have made this work. You have got the power to gain wealth. Why? Because God has given it to you. God, You have a God-given power to get wealth. It's been a while since we said this, but it's time to say this. I've got the power. I've got the power. I've got the power. Come on. Dun, dun, I've got the power. Dun, dun, Wherever you want you from, I've got the power right here. You have got the power to gain wealth. So if you haven't, if you haven't igtp us yet, come on. If you haven't igtp us, you need to igtp us. You've got the power. If we have I've any power got the academy power. Academy students, on I've got here. the power. We used to say that a lot in Power Academy. I've come got on. the power, but it's true. You have got the power from God to get wealth. Come on, Praveen. God has given you the power to get wealth. And why has he given us the power to get wealth? He hasn't given us the power to get wealth so that we can lavish it on ourselves, Coaches, so that we can do whatever we want. He's given us the power to get wealth. And it says it right here, the next part of this verse, that he may establish his covenant, which is what to your fathers as it is this day. The reason why God's given us the power to get wealth, number one, he loves us and he wants his kids blessed and he looks after his children. You are his child, he's your father, and he looks after his children, praise God. He goes, he goes by his own word, amen. But the second reason is he wants you blessed so he can be a blessing. He wants to establish his covenant, and it costs money for the Lord to establish his covenant on earth. Yeah. Talk, I mean, you can simply put it this way. It costs money to let people know how much Jesus loves them. The good Samaritan needed money to help the person who was in trouble. It costs money to get the gospel out. It costs money for us to have a headquarters so we can get the gospel out and house our staff. It costs money to, to go online. Even though Facebook might be free, it, we have staff running this. It costs money to, to preach at churches. It costs money to fly around the world. It costs money to hold conferences. It costs money to establish his covenant. It costs money to spread the gospel. And that's what this is talking about, praise God. But the main point I want to make today is that he's given you the power to get wealth. You have that power to get wealth. And we're talking today about two types of money. Okay, there's two types of money. There's devotional money and there's transactional money. Mm -hmm. And here's the problem I think, Carly, a lot of us make. We're talking about, I'm talking specifically for people that are entrepreneurial. You know, that, on, that really, like apostles are really spiritual entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Like it's very apostolic to be entrepreneurial. When you're entrepreneurial, it means that you see ways of doing things. You can raise money. You can make something out of nothing, basically. You're a pioneer. You're a visionary. 
But entrepreneurs, a lot of people on here are entrepreneurial. This is what this is for. This is business supernaturally. That's you, different from a entrepreneur. A entrepreneur, an entrepreneur. But here's the, th here's the deal. It. Here's the deal. That, yeah, put your hand to something. God's given you the power to get wealth. So God doesn't give us wealth directly. Remember that. God does not give us wealth directly. He does not rain money from heaven. No, what he does is he gives us the power. He gives us the ability. He gives us the witty inventions. He gives us the ideas. He gives us the solutions. He shows us things to come so that we can make money, so that we can produce wealth, okay? But the, the mistake a lot of us make, and I've made this mistake, the mistake, I know it's hard to believe that I made a mistake, but I have made at least one mistake in my life. But you can make mistakes. You can make mistakes. And this is the mistake. We think that money is going to come to us devotionally. And let me tell you, money very rarely comes to you devotionally. Now, if you're a Levite, if you like, if you're in full-time, quote-unquote, ministry where you live by the gospel, that's fine. If you're full-time, you live by the gospel, that's fine. But 90% of the time, especially entrepreneurs, you're not going to live by devotional money. You're going to live by transactional money. And here's where the body of Christ have missed it. They don't realize this, okay? Your money, God is going to bless you with money transactionally. He's not going to bless you with money necessarily devotionally or rain it from heaven or supernaturally. Mm -hmm. Now, he can give you supernatural increase. I'm going to show you some biblical examples of supernatural increase in a transactional world. But here's what you've got to understand. God is going to get money to you transactionally. What does that look like? It means buying something for $100 and sending it for $200. It means buying a house for $300,000 and sending it for $400,000. It means having a house and renting it out. It means having a store online on eBay or Etsy and selling products. It means mowing someone's lawn or babysitting for someone. It means washing someone's car. That's transactional money. When we do business, whatever that business is, service business, um, uh, uh, in investments, real estate, royalties even, IP, whatever the businesses are, whatever way you're getting money, whatever way you're receiving money, that is transactional. Transactional money. And it's very powerful because God's given you the ability to get tran money transactionally. He's given you the, the ability to do things so that you can receive money transactionally. There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, it's a great thing. It's a holy thing. In fact, the Jews really understand this because the word worship in the Hebrew and work are the same word. You know that? It's the same word. They're interchangeable. I did a, I did a previous mm -hmm. live. You can look it up. I did a previous business supernatural on this, the fact that when we go to work and we put our hands to something, whether we're employed, whether we're self-employed, whether we own business, whether we do investments, whatever we do, that work is actually worship to God. So when we work and put our hands to something, it's worship to God. Deuteronomy 28, 18, uh, not 28, 18, 28, 8 says that he blesses the works of our hands. When we put our hands to something, God can bring us supernatural increase in the transaction. So transactionally, people might pay you. You might be an Uber driver or a Lyft driver. People may pay you to drive them somewhere. That's a transactional payment. They pay, they're paying you. Trans they're not giving you money just because they love you. No. They're giving you money because it's transactional. Okay, but here's the thing where we miss it. We don't realize that transactional money is from God. Number one, God gives us the ability to get wealth. So that transactional money is from God. And the second thing is we don't realize there's something that triggers supernatural increase on that transactional money. Mm -hmm. So you could go through life just getting transactional money and not see any increase. But the way you get supernatural increase on transactional money is when you give the devotional money. There's devotional money, there's transactional money. What is devotional money, you might ask me, Ashley? I'm glad you asked. What is devotional money, Ashley? I'm glad you asked. Yeah. Devotional money is money that you give to the Lord, money you give to the gospel. That's so this devotional is money. That people money. Would give in an that's offering. money you give. That's money you give in an offering. Money you give in a tithe? Yep, you're giving yeah. a, you could give in a tithe, you're giving an offering. What about partnership? Partnership, all those types of things. That is devotional money. Okay. And here's the thing. Let's talk about your small business right now, your business right now. Did you know that your business should be giving? Like personally, we give, right? Mm -hmm. And then our ministry gives. Also, any businesses we have, any business also gives. So I want blessings in that business. I want to mm -hmm. give from that business. So there's actually, and I had a good question come up earlier. It talked about how you can, um, how should you uh, tithe off the gross or should you tithe off the net? Well, when it comes to your income, I believe in tithing off of your gross income. I, I want to give to the Lord before I give to Uncle Sam, you know, before I pay my taxes. But that's very different mm -hmm. in business. In business, and I'm going to answer that question in a minute, in business it's very different. You have to look at a few things when you're talking about gross and net. But anyway, let me just say this. Your business, your ministry, your church, whatever you're doing, should be giving. These are living organisms. These are, these are entities. They should be given. I really believe that your business should be given and a minimum 10%. In fact, most of our businesses give more like 20%. And I remember, Carly, in the early days when we was in business, we used to get really excited because we would make money. Say we made $1,000 on a deal. And I remember taking that $1,000. I remember thinking that's $100 for church. That's a tithe. 
and that's a hundred dollars to at the time I was it, I was um, still am, but I was given to Andrew Warren Ministries. So hundred dollars to Andrew Warren Ministries, and then I'd use and then I'd use one percent to missionaries. I'd give to missionaries. That's another ten dollars that missionary, ten dollars that missionary, ten dollars that missionary, and then we'd give on top of that. So as the money came in transactionally, we would give it devotionally. And guess what happens when you give devotionally, when you get committed to giving devotionally, it's amazing how the transactional will get uh, supernaturally increased. We're talking about business supernaturally. I want you to run your business supernaturally. I want you to have a small business or business, whatever you do, even your workplace, when you, if you go to work, I want you to do it supernaturally. And I want you to receive the supernatural benefits of God's increase of God's supernatural superfluous increase. I really believe that. So remember, we're going to ask, answer questions at the end, so you can post your questions right now. Our staff will feed them to us. But this is exciting because there is two types of money. There's devotional money and there's transactional money. And what happens is we often think that, that when we give devotionally, it's going to come back to us devotionally, increase, you know, devotionally. It, or it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10, that it increases the seed that you sow. So when you increase, when you sow seed, it's going to increase back to you. But often we sow, we sow seed devotionally, and often we're waiting for that seed to come back devotionally increased. Mm -hmm. It very rarely comes back devotionally increased. It comes back transactionally increased. And I'm telling you, we, me and Carly have had small businesses basically all our lives. How many times have we had supernatural increase? Like, that must have been God. I mean, how could you make a 1,000% profit? How could you sell something in a matter of hours? Mm -hmm. How could you sell over market value? How can these things happen? How could you find that piece of real estate and it doubles in value? How can you find that, that deal? And it's, you know, all these supernatural things. And sometimes it's not just cash. It's not in the cash form. It comes back as, it comes back as increase it comes, or it comes back as opportunities. Mm -hmm. Maybe you get a contract yep. to do something or a job, you know, if you're... If maybe if, if, if in constructions, maybe you, you get a, a job site or something that comes up or a deal or, you know, maybe you get to, you know, if you're in retail, maybe you close more deals that month or, yep. you know, people just come to your store more mm -hmm. than they went to somebody else's store. I mean, there's different ways. It doesn't necessarily look, look like cash that's coming back. But if you get Sometimes more deals, opportunities. yeah, but if you get more deals or more customers, or more, that is track. That's transactional. Yeah. That's I love people when they're on commission, any type of commission, because I say this. Thank you. That was the word I was looking for. Commission. Tongue <laughs> yes. in cheek, tongue in cheek, but it's easy for God to bless you when you're on some sort of commission because you're not on a fixed salary. God can still bless you on a fixed salary. But if you're on any type of commission, if you're self-employed, if you're a business owner, it's amazing how God can increase those transactional. And do not forget, you know, that first verse we read, uh, Deuteronomy 8.18, do not forget the Lord your God. And here's a word I got for you today, business owners. Here's a word, entrepreneurs. Here's a, here's a, a word I got for you today. Do not forget when the Lord blessed you. Do not forget those times when you had increase Sometimes we can see that increase. Oh, we just got lucky. Oh, that was just the housing market. That was just a, a you know a lucky contract. Oh, that was just no. It is God increasing you supernaturally through transactional things. So when you get that extra bonus, when you get that extra contract, when you get that influx of customers, when you make that massive profit on that on that so real estate. Just asking, does a bonus count as being transactional? Yes, a bonus comes in. That's transactional. Any way money comes in is transactional, and we've got to understand. We've got to do not forget the Lord your God because it's he who gives you the power to get wealth. When them transactional things happen, praise God. Remember that is the Lord blessing you, supernatural increase. And, and so anyway, devotional money belongs to the Lord, okay? Devotional money belongs to the Lord. I'm not gonna get right into it, but in Joshua 7, there's a story about how they defeated some, uh, the city of Ai. And what happened was in the end is, is they didn't give the things of the Lord to the Lord. They kept the devotional things. Hmm. The first statement I made on this it's live a was... misappropriation of funds. That's right. The, the first statement I made on this live was, lack in your life does not come from money you don't have. Lack in your life comes from money you do have that you shouldn't have. Let me say that again. Lack in your life doesn't come from money you don't have. Lack in your life comes from money you do have that you shouldn't have. In other words, you've kept hold of the devotional money. Holding onto the seed. When that devotional money, that's right, it's the seed. That devotional money is meant for yeah. the Lord, okay? Yeah. So in, in, in Joshua 7, you can read it in your own time, they captured the city, blah, blah, blah. They kept the devotional things and they did not receive the favor of God. Now you are blessed. Jesus has blessed us. Uh, Galatians 3.13, he has, he has taken away the curse of the law. You are completely blessed today. You know, you are blessed. God's pleased you and everything else. But if you want to see this supernatural increase on your transaction, God can love you. You can be blessed. But if you want to actually see it happen in your transactional business, there has to be a releasing of that devotional money. Mm. You have to release that devotional. And I'm talking about your business. If you have a business, you need to be given from that business. You know, Acts 20, 35, Acts chapter 20, verse 35, Jesus said it's more blessed to give 
than to receive. Why is that? Because when you give, praise God, you are giving devotionally, and when you receive, you receive transactional wealth, and you receive increase on that. So it's more blessed to give than to receive. So anyway, the story, uh, the defeat in AI is a very good story because it's talking about how they did not give the devotional things to the Lord. They were meant to give devotional things to the Lord. I don't want to get too far into this. We're talking about first fruits, we're talking about tithe and all them types of things. Wh whatever, I want you to give systematically in your business. I want you to give devotional money devotionally and then you watch the transactional increase happen. I've got a great example of this. And I think you should be expecting it to. Yep. You know, these things, these returns are promises and there's not a safer place, not a safer investment than in the kingdom of God. Come on. So good. It's so good. So uh, get, grab your Bibles. Turn to um, 1 Kings or 2 Kings, sorry, chapter 4. This is one of my favorite stories about chapter. this. 2 Kings chapter 4. And we're going to look at this story. This is a great example about devotional money and transactional money. Remember, we're talking about two types of money, devotional. Some of the money that comes into your life is devotional. Some of your money comes into your life is transactional. The way God increases us is through transactional money. That's why this is a business supernatural life. Whatever your business is, we're going to be praying for your businesses in a minute. Me and Kylie are going to pray for your businesses. We're also going to be praying for your personal increase, and we're going to be answering your questions. So don't forget to ask questions. Put them in the, in the comments, YouTube, Facebook, and we'll, our staff will feed them to us on the iPad. So real quickly, this is the story. You've all heard this story, no doubt. But this is Elisha and the widow woman, okay? Let me just break this down. We're talking about business supernatural. So let's look at this from a business standpoint, okay? So a certain woman, the wives of the sons of the prophet, cried out to Elisha saying, your servant, my husband, is dead. Now, this lady's um, husband was close to Elisha. He served him and things like that. So he knew him, okay? So wait for this. is. um is dead, and you know that your servant feared the Lord, and the creditor is coming to take my, my two sons as his slaves. So she owed money here. Obviously, her husband didn't have good life insurance. Please, husbands, get good life insurance. Wives, don't nag your husbands, but suggest them they get good life insurance. It's good to have life insurance. It's good to take care of those who are left behind. If anything was to happen, you went to heaven early, so get good life insurance. I'm just saying, it's not lack of faith. It's not anything else. Plan for your future. Uh, you know, uh, Proverbs 22, hmm. I think it's 20. I can find it. It says a good man leaves an inheritance to his... Proverbs 13, 22. That's the one. Proverbs 13, 22 says a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. So it's good to plan ahead. Her husband did not plan ahead. And now she's in this critical situation. Not only is she in debt, the creditors is going to take her sons away to pay off the debt. Okay. So verse 2. This is 2 Kings, 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 2. So Elisha said to her, what shall I do for you? Tell me what is in your house. Man, this is another whole lesson. Everything you need to prosper is already in your hand. You already have the ability. God may bring new people across your path. God may bring new skill sets, all those things. But right now within you, you have the power to get wealth. And God is asking you, what's in your hand? What's in your house? What do you have available to you right now? Some of you are despising small beginnings. Some of you aren't realizing how much talent God's given you, how much previous experience God's given you, how much knowledge you have, previous um, uh, employment, uh, all different types of things. Often we'll overlook that and we'll look for the big time. Mm. We want the big break. We want the big business idea. We want that one invention or that one idea that's going to be a multi-billion dollar invention. You know, most of the time things happen small. God works things in seed form. Do not despise small beginnings. And God has given you something in your house or in your hands that you can start using and he can multiply. Think about that. Previous experience, knowledge that you have. Thing, physical things, maybe you have things in your house, literally you can sell. Mm -hmm. Things, you have something in your hand to give to the Lord. You have something in your hand for the Lord to work with. He'll bless the works of your hands. So Elisha says to the widow, what's in your house? And then she says, she almost misses it here, because she says, your servant has nothing in the house. I don't have anything. A lot of people say this to me, Carly. They say, I don't have any skills. I don't have any ideas. I'm not like one of those you know, rich people. I'm not like one of those clever people. I'm just very simple. I don't have anything to give. I don't have anything to offer. I don't have anything to work with. And that's the problem because that's how you see yourself. So that's who, you know, you become who you perceive yourself to mm -hmm. be. Mm -hmm. So if, you're, if you, um, you actually can discount yourself from very the easy. blessings of God manifesting in your life, you can repel them with your words. Yeah. So if that's you, repent. That's right. All you've got to do is repent yeah. and say, no, that's not true. Because guess what? You do have something in your hand. You are Christ indwelled. I'm telling you, you have, you have something in your disposal. God has given you skills. God's given you something to give. And the minute you want to give, by the way, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10 says he gives seed to the sower. So the minute you make a mind up to give, he's going to give you some seed to give. Yeah, if you decide that, if you determine it. in your heart that you want to be a sower, then demand the seed. Yeah, God's going to give you some seed. Yeah. So back here to this story, it says verse 2, uh, 2, Corinthians, 2, Corinthians, 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 2. She says, my servant, uh, my maid, your maid servant has nothing but... 
a jar of oil, just a little bit of oil. That's what I've got, a little bit of oil. What's, what's that? This so is she very, did have something. Then. This is very similar to the feeding of the 5,000. Like this big need, 5,000 hungry men. And the disciple says, all we have is two loaves, and, uh, you know, two fish and five loaves. But what are so few among so many? Like this isn't going to be enough. It's amazing how God can give us something in seed form and we almost despise it if we're not careful. Remember, God delights in, in doing things in seed form because then he gets the glory. He delights in taking the lowly things. Do not despise small beginnings, okay? So anyway, she says, have a bit of oil. Then uh, verse three, Elisha gives her some specific instructions. I'm here to tell you today, church, God will give you specific instructions. I want you to spend a number of, uh, uh, you know, however long you want. I don't want to give a time because as soon as I give a time, people get religious about it. But if I was you, I would be praying in the Holy Ghost every day over my business. I'd be praying the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. every day over my ministry, over my business, over my employment, mm -hmm. over my investments, whatever you do. Pray in the Holy Ghost. And I'm telling you, he will give you specific instructions. I've prayed in the Holy Ghost and he's given us specific instructions. I remember one time we were trying to refinance one of our rental houses. And we tried everywhere and all our best friends and everything, mortgage advisors, underwriters, we could not get a loan. I prayed in the Holy Ghost over that house and supernaturally I found this lender and I got a better loan than I ever imagined. I was, we was able to make money instead of lose money, we was able to bless the tenants. And God will give you specific, I remember one time, we used to buy and sell RVs for season, okay? So we had RVs, recreational vehicles, motorhomes, pop-ups. And I remember one time getting that big RV and the transmission went out. And I thought, no, there, there goes all my profit plus, you know, $5,000 down the drain. I prayed in the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, pray in the Holy Ghost over your business. And God gave me specific instructions. He said, you can fix this yourself. And I remember praying in the Holy Ghost yeah. and saying to Carly, remember I said, Carly, I'm going to fix this myself. Now, if you don't know me, I'm not that mechanical, not mechanical okay? No. I can do things. I mean, I can fix this with my hands. I've done, I've done a lot of construction products and that. When it comes to mechanics, I'm okay, but I'm not exactly a skilled mechanic. So to fix a transmission, but the Lord told me, I'm going to show you how to fix it. And I prayed in the Holy Ghost, and he gave me this word. And I went online, and I, and I researched it, and it was a speed sensor. And I went down the store, and I bought a $19.99, a $20 speed sensor. I took one wrench, went under the back axle, took out that speed sensor with one bolt, put in the new speed sensor, and once that speed sensor was regulated, got back in it, prayed in the Holy Ghost, and that transmission changed perfectly. It was not, wasn't the transmission, it was just a speed sensor sending the wrong information to the transmission. $20 fix, but guess what fixed it? Praying in the Holy Ghost. I've had this time and time again with all different types of vehicles, with business ideas, investments, real estate, everything. Pray in the Holy Ghost over your business. Someone was just asking if they can pray and uh, ask God what talents or ideas he's given them. That's good. You can, but here's a better way to do it, right? You just get thankful. Come on. You just get on, thankful. Guy. You know, in Romans, Amen. the first chapter of Romans, it says their foolish hearts was darkened because they were unthankful. Yeah. So, so in good. other words, people that aren't thankful are dullards, really. Dull I mean, they just, um, that, yeah, I just That's did. Good. I mean, they're just dim, right? Yeah. They're dim. They're, they're dim in their thinking. They're dim in their ideas. Yeah. And it's because they're not thankful. So if mm -hmm. we want to stir up the gifts of God Come that's on. on the inside of us, if we want to have revelation about what is God has already put on the inside of us, just start thanking him. Come if on, you have God. an attitude of gratitude, right? Attitude of gratitude. And come on. The the ideas will come. Come on. The it's thank, so true. You know, just thankfulness so opens true. the floodgates for creativity. Come on. And oftentimes people just that, that sit there and say, Oh, I've got nothing, I'm yeah. going nowhere, nothing ever works for me, and they come up with all the reasons why not. It is a self-fulfilling prop, uh, yeah. prophecy, and they 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 actually shut that part of their mind off. Yeah. They 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 turn off their spiritual ears for listening. Yeah through their own words and their own bad attitude. Come on. But if you just get to be, you know, you start by being thankful and you might yeah. sit around thinking, I've got nothing to be thankful for. Then thank God for the air that you breathe. Yeah. Thank God you're alive. You're alive. Come on. You've got some sort of way that you're live streaming this today. Be yeah. thankful for that. Yeah. You start with the little things and so it good. stirs you up and then it gives you more ideas and more so opportunities. Good. And guess what? Your thankfulness attracts the favor of God in Come your on. life. It Come opens on. the doors for you. The first thing I do in the morning is I like to pray and start thanking God for everything in my life. And one of the things I'm thankful mm -hmm. for is I, I tell God, thank you, Lord, you've given me the ability to get wealth. I just read you yeah. that verse in you Deuteronomy 8.18. 8, start thanking God. What Carly's saying is so true. If you confess, I can't do anything, I never have a good idea, I never have a lucky break, I never get a good opportunity, I never get a good deal, you know, I'm always overlooked, that you're going to get exactly what you say. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. If you speak those things, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're, your faith is working perfect. And things you don't want it to. Your faith is working perfect <laughs> in things you don't want it to. Say this, okay? Every time you say a statement, say at the end, my friend, uh, uh, Terry Seville Foy, I love her. She's got such a great ministry. She says this. Whenever you make a statement, say this at the end. Remember when she said this, Carly? 
And that's exactly how I want it to be. That will change the way you speak. You start saying, I never get a good business opportunity. And that's exactly how I want it to be. I can't seem to lose weight. And that's exactly how I want it to be. I never get, I always get overlooked for promotion. That's exactly how I want My it to be. My husband's a miserable so and so. And that's exactly how I want it to be. So <laughs> change your misbehave. confession. That's exactly how I want it to be. <laughs> change your confession. We're going off topic here, but change your confession. It's so important in business. We're talking about business here. Change your confession. Oh, uh, Pravian says that Charles Capps used to say that. That's probably yeah. where she got it from. She's she's grown up in the household of faith, obviously, with, her, with her, uh, the surveillers. But anyway, I'm telling you, change your confession. And I understand that you want to speak those things. So I, I pray in the morning and say, Lord, I thank you that my hands are blessed. I thank you that you've given me the power to get wealth. I thank you opportunities to come my way. I thank you I, I know how to make money. I thank you, Lord, I'm prosperous. I thank you if you give me new opportunities. You give me divine uh, connections. You know, you give me uh, Kairos moments. You give me new ways yeah. of doing things. You give me witty inventions. You start doing that, it's amazing what happens. I love here real quickly what Robin says. Robin here says, I found a new, uh, my eyes have been opened for your ministry and uh, God's opened my mind up for your ministry. I've had I've, I've new business opportunities I thought would never happen. And I'm seeing God's blessings taking me higher. I can't wait to build, to help build and help the kingdom. Praise God, Robin. See, awesome. see how, you, how her attitude is that she can't wait to build the kingdom because really the power to get wealth is to establish his covenant. Yeah. But anyway. Back to this story. We're not going to get through this story, Ricardo. Come back to this story. Second Kings chapter four. Distracting. Second Kings distracting me. I love it. I love you, Billy. So Second Kings chapter four. We're back in this story. So she says, "All I have is a little bit of, of oil." Okay. And Elisha gives a specific instruction. That's where I got distracted. Elisha gave the widow woman specific, not Pacific. That's an ocean. Specific instructions. Okay. And he told her exactly what to do. I'm here to tell you, God, by His Holy Spirit by his word, will give you specific instructions on what to do. Yep. He gave very specific instructions to Noah, exactly how to build the ark. Mm -hmm. He gave specific instructions to Abraham, exactly how to build the tabernacle. He gave specific instructions to David and Solomon, exactly how to build the temple. Mm -hmm. He will give you specific instructions today, exactly how to prosper his way, how to run your business, how to, who to hire, when to hire, how, wh how to market, who to market to. He will give you specific instructions. And the way you hear God best is by spending time with him, praying in the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, if you could spend half an hour a day with Warren Buffett, you know, Donald Trump, uh, Steve Jobs is dead now, but you know, Steve Jobs, you know, all these people that have grown big businesses and wealthy people, if you could spend time with them every day and ask them questions and hear their advice, you want to do that, right? Guess what? You've got someone infinitely more uh, with more wisdom than any of those people. You've got the, the king of wisdom himself. You've got the inventor of wisdom. You have God the Father available to you 24-7. Spend time, extended periods of time, praying the Holy Ghost specifically over your business, over the works of your hands, over your employment, whatever you do day to day. And he'll give you specific instructions. So right here he said, verse 3, go and borrow vessels from everywhere. So he told uh, the widow woman, this is what you've got to do. Go and borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbours, empty vessels, don't borrow just a few. Now, she came to Elijah saying, help me. Guess what? Really, in a way, I'm reading between the lines. But guess what she's asking for? She's asking for money. She's asking for a handout. She says, Elijah, listen, mm -hmm. my two sons are going to get taken away. I'm a widow and the creditors are coming. I'm in trouble. Elijah, give me some money, basically. I mean, she might not have been meaning that, but that's what it comes across as. A lot of the time, we'll ask God for money, but God will give us opportunities, opportunities. to make money. In return, Elisha gave this woman an opportunity to make money and she had to follow those instructions. She could have been offended. I don't want I don't want to work with my hands. I want money. I don't want to have to go and borrow pots. What type of scheme is this? Going to borrow empty pots. But guess what? She had to do this in order to receive the income. And there's a lesson in that just, just full stop, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, do we want a handout? Because if you want a handout, if you're, if you're always begging God for a handout, right. you know, you're living from crisis to crisis. Come on, Carly. But sometimes we miss the opportunity. You know, we ask for a handout, mm. but God offers us an opportunity Come because on. he doesn't want us to perpetually be living in crisis. Yeah. So if you're in, living in a crisis, you may be that you're just asking for a handout and you're missing the opportunity that's returning to you. So good. And that is usually one that takes a little bit of effort. It takes a little bit of involvement. It takes you to lift your head up and put your hand to something. Right. And um, and that isn't always very popular um, in the world, you know, but but there's effort, there's response required. Everything that operates in the kingdom is an invitation. Yeah, every every process that you see in the kingdom, faith, 
is it is a response to the invitation of grace. Yeah, come on. Right? Bro. It there's there's an opportunity of salvation. We had to respond to it. There's an opportunity yeah. to receive something. God has all the goods. Come on. He has all the benefits. He has all the promises. But we still need a response. Come so on. if we go cap in hand, begging God to heal us or mm. begging God to prosper us, it's like we're asking him for a handout, but he's given us an opportunity. Right? Mm. He's given us, look, I'm I'm leading you into an opportunity where you can receive these things. But there still needs to be a response required. So, so she powerful. needed to respond. She had to respond. Real mm -hmm. quickly, uh, Balbo, I hope I'm putting it right now, Balbo from Canada is uh, saying that she applied for, or they applied for their permanent residency without a lawyer. Everyone says, you've got to get a lawyer. Yeah, they we, prayed in the Holy Ghost. We didn't have a lawyer either. We did this. We prayed in the Holy Ghost. We did it ourselves. Sometimes yeah. it's nothing wrong with hiring a lawyer, but I'm saying sometimes God will show you supernatural ways of doing things. So Holy anyway, Spirit's a good lawyer. Instead, of, instead of just uh, letting the Lord give you a fish, why not let him teach you how to fish? I mean, like Christian said, you can have more than enough so you can be a blessing to others. So he said, well, go and get these pots. Now, she had to do this by faith. It didn't, seem, it didn't seem logical. How many of you know, a lot of the times, God will give you witty inventions. He'll give you ways of doing things. In your business, we're talking business, working of miracles, the gift of working of miracles works in business. It mm -hmm. works in finances. It works in the super work, the, the working of miracles in finances. He'll give you things to do that don't make sense to your logical mind. It takes faith. And some of you think, that doesn't make any sense. Do you want me to do this today? That doesn't make sense. Do you want me to say this? Do you want me to say, you know, give this to this customer? Do you want me to do this? It might not make logical sense, but when it's God, go with it. Obey God and leave all the consequences to Him. And how many times have we missed it because we think that can't be right? That's just me. That can't be right. That's just a, that's just that seems like a strange idea. No, it's God speaking to you. Go with it. So she went with it. She she followed the instructions. She went to all her neighbours and said, "Hey, can I borrow some empty vessels? Can I borrow? Can I borrow your gravy boat? Can I borrow your vase? Go can that I borrow old bit of Tupperware with no bit lid. Bit of Tupperware with no lid. Using. Can Doesn't I have that fit properly. Can yeah. I borrow that? Can I borrow that <laughs> ceramic dish? Can I borrow that Pyrex? Borrowing all these pots and pans, all that. Okay, she got all these pots and pans. And he says, and when you've come in, shut the door behind you, you and your sons, and then pour into the empty vessels and set aside the full ones. So she had to get these empty vessels. She went to her house. She followed the instructions. She shut the door behind her. I believe that was shutting unbelief out. Jesus did this. He shut people out of the room sometimes when he was healing people. Shut the unbelief out. Do what the Lord says. And then she had to start pouring out the oil. So she had to start giving her oil or pouring out her oil. And guess what? As she poured that oil out into those empty vessels, the oil supernaturally increased. But guess what? It says here in um, uh, it says here in verse five. So she went from him, shut the door behind her and her sons. She brought in the vessels and poured it out. Now it came to pass. This is verse six of Second Kings chapter four. We're talking about business supernaturally. If you just joined us, we're talking about two types of money. We're talking about devotional money and transactional money, and we're talking about how to increase God's way business supernaturally. Second Kings chapter four, verse five says. So when she went, she shut the door, did these things. And verse six. Now it came to pass when the vessels were full. When the last vessel was full, that she turned to her son and said, bring me another vessel. And guess what? He said to her, there is not another vessel. So the oil ceased. This is huge, everyone. We're talking about business supernaturally here. The minute that last vessel was full up, the oil ceased increasing. Now, guess what? She could have had one vessel and the oil only would have increased to the one vessel. So she could she have had a thousand vessels. She determined the harvest. She could have had a thousand vessels and every vessel would have been filled up. But guess what? The supernatural overflow, the supernatural increase from this business, if you like, stopped the minute it couldn't flow anywhere. Now, do you Man, think... Man, this is huge. Do you think that if she'd have realised that that was what, how it worked, that she'd have got a few more vessels, she may have gone to the next village. She already got she me. May have, she may have made some vessels, right? She might have weaved some bowls or whatever she needed to do. I love she this. Done something else. Doozy, I think she would. Doozy days on YouTube. So this used to annoy them as a kid because they're like, hey, go and get some more vessels. Yeah, say, son, you better get some more vessels, boy. Get out there. But I reckon they bought all the vessels they could find because it says they didn't borrow just a few. They bought a lot of vessels. But the point being is this. When that last vessel got filled up, the increase finished. Mm -hmm. And this is amazing because one, she determined the size of her harvest. But two, the supernatural increase on this business, and this was a business because they went and took this oil and sold it. They actually went, she said she went to Elisha, just to finish the story off. She went to, to Elisha, verse 7, and she told the man of God, she told Elijah, she said, look what's happened. And he said to her, go and sell the oil and pay off your debt, and you and your sons live off the rest. So, so she, she, was, she was just asking for enough money to pay off her debt. The Lord gave her enough money, gave her the ability to get enough money to pay off her debt and live off the rest. That's how much money she made. So she had to go to market. Maybe she opened an oil market store or whatever. Maybe she put the oil on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace. Maybe whatever she did, she went and she sold the oil. She had to do that step of selling the oil. She had to put her hands to that. Not only did the oil increase, she then had to go and sell that oil to make the money. So okay? the Lord blessed the work of her hands. She, the Lord blessed the work of her hands. 
started with what she had and made yep. a business out of it. That's right. She started with what she had and then just it increased supernaturally. So there's a few yep. things. She had to have a place for that supernatural increase to flow into. I'm here to tell you, church, listen to me, entrepreneur. Listen to me, you entrepreneurs out there. You have to have a place for this supernatural increase to flow. Some of this is talking about systems in your business, ways of doing things. You know what? You're praying for 20 new customers. You couldn't handle 20 new customers at the moment because you have no infrastructure to handle them. Mm -hmm. You're praying for you know, a million dollars. You couldn't handle a million dollars. You don't know what to do with it. You're praying for these things. You're praying for increase. You're praying for promotion. You're praying for these opportunities. You're praying for new contracts. Have you got any infrastructure? Have you got systems in place? Are you able, you, at the moment you've got 10 customers, are you able to handle 100 customers? You might have 100 customers. You're able to handle 1,000 customers. I'm telling you, get some systems in place so that you can handle the supernatural increase of God. Let me tell you, some of you aren't getting your prayers answered because it is, it is God's mercy on you. Because if you really did get those, you know, double your business doubled or quadrupled, you, you drowned. Get some systems in place to handle increase. Mm -hmm. Get you some know, we systems in place to handle increase. This, even in, uh, within our ministry, mm -hmm. you know, we wanted to reach millions of people. Well, yep. when we started, we weren't ready to reach millions of people. Mm -hmm. We didn't have a phone number. We didn't have a website. We, right. didn't, we didn't have any, we didn't have a bank account. Right. Right? We didn't have anything. We didn't have resources. One of the, this really highlight was highlighted to me the first time we went to a meeting and somebody, you know, we'd worked for Andrew Warburton Ministries for years. And anytime somebody got born again or baptized in the Holy Spirit, we gave him one of his uh, teaching materials, his yeah. free books that he gives mm -hmm. out explaining Holy Spirit and salvation. Yeah. And um, well, the first time we had a meeting on our own, people were getting born again, they were getting healed, they were getting set free. And we're like, where are the books? Suddenly we realized, oh, this is our meeting. We don't yeah. have books. <laughs> we need to make a book. You make a book. And that's how we ended up with the Your Life with God book. Yeah. But God didn't trust us with reaching millions of people until we had systems to meet the people's needs that were right in front of us. Yeah. So sometimes there's baby steps. It really is. God's favour, God's favour and supernatural increase will meet your preparation. God's favour and supernatural increase will meet your preparation. This widow woman was prepared with empty vessels mm -hmm. and the supernatural increase was able to flow. Okay, the other way of looking at this is giving. You know what, she, if you don't have plans for that increase to come, where's it going to go? God's going to increase you because mm -hmm. he gets money to you. He, he gives you money to create wealth. He gives you the power to create, create wealth so you can get money, so you can give. So where are you giving to? What's your plans for giving? Do you have a plan for giving for your business? Because well, when my business hits a million dollars, I'll give. Or when my business no, hits 100,000. I don't care if you make a dollar. Think about giving off that dollar because guess what? God's going to get the money through you. Okay, so that he'll get it to you if he can get it through you. And he's gonna, he wants you to have more than enough so you can be a blessing. The best definition of prosperity I can find is 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 9, verse 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. It's a financial verse and it says, God is able to make all grace abound towards you. We're talking about in your business now. God's able to make all grace. Grace meaning supernatural ability and favor, ways of doing things that you couldn't do on your own. God's able to make all grace abound towards you that you having all sufficiency in all things, meaning all your needs met all the time, all the bills paid all the time, all the payroll, every employee, every customer, all the bills, every vendor, all the bills paid all the time, all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. Amen. God's plan for your business is for it to make so much money, there's going to be an abundance so that you can give to every good work. This used to excite us, it still does. When we were in business, it used to excite us. We used to love to go and make $1,000, love to go and make $10,000. Why? Because that's $1,000, that's $100, that's $200, that's $500 into the kingdom. And the easier it is to make money, the easier it is to give money. I'm telling you, it's powerful. So get this mentality that money's meant to come through you into the kingdom. When you start focusing on others, when you start focusing on the kingdom needs, I'm telling you, setting your sights on your own needs is such a small, small-minded way of doing it. Set your sight on kingdom needs. Put giving at the top of your budget. When me and Carly were, were, were younger, we used to dream about giving big. We'd say, man, what would it be like one day to give $1,000? What would it be like one day to give $10,000? What would it be like one day to give $100,000? You know, we've actually been able to do that. We've had to write those checks. We're, we're believing now, what would it be like one day to give a million dollars in one offering? I'm telling you, you need to focus on those things and watch what happens. Your income will go up to that level of your expectation because you're actually putting God first. Seek first the kingdom of God. And all these things, these natural things will be added to you. So when it comes to business, listen to me, get some systems in place ready for growth. Systems in your business to handle more growth, but also systems or systematic giving. Devotional money is money that comes to you that's meant to be given to the kingdom. Minimum 10%. 10% is like the training wheels. 
10% is the absolute minimum. I believe God did that for our own hearts. We wouldn't be condemned by our own hearts, but it's easy. Money comes and in. everyone can do the math on that. That's right. Give in percentages, <laughs> Jack. That's right. That's what we do. Give on percentages. If, if $100 comes in, $10 to, as a tithe. I'd give another $10 an offering. Maybe I'd give $5 to a missionary. Percentages. When a million dollars comes in, you know exactly where it's going to go. If you give a million dollars to this ministry right now, I know exactly where it's going to go. I know what it's going to be put to work, where it's going to be given. Some of it's going to be given. A portion of it's going to be saved. Some of it's going to be invested. Some of it's going to go into the kingdom's work. So I'm telling you, you need to have a plan for increase. And when you do that, and here's the thing, when you give devotionally, it puts the supernatural increase on your transactional money. So let me say this again. Devotional money is money that you give to missionaries, to ministries, to church, wherever you want to give. And then the transactional side of things will have that blessing on it. Because God says he will increase the seed that you sow. So this is the secret sauce, everyone. You give and then you watch what happens to the transaction. You still need to put your hands to something. God blesses the works of your hands. You still need to be used, dedicated, you know, uh, diligence. You know, Proverbs 13, 4, I believe it. It says the diligent soul will be made rich. He's still diligence involved. But when you, do, when you activate that spiritual blessing by giving devotionally, your transactional side of the business will start taking off. Why? Because you've been giving devotionally, you've put in that supernatural blessing on the transactional side. And all of a sudden, you're going to have new customers, you're going to have special breakthrough, you're going to have bonuses coming, you're going to have promotions, you're going to have all these things coming. Think, why did that happen? It wasn't because you were so smart, it was because you activated that with the devotional giving. Two types of money, everyone. Devotional money is money that you should not have yourself. That's money that belongs to the kingdom, money that you give to the kingdom of God. And then transactional money is the way that God gives money to you primarily in ways of business and whatever your employment is, he'll give it to you transactionally and there'll be a supernatural increase on that transactional money. That's what this widow woman saw. That oil being poured out was a transactional thing. But there was a supernatural blessing on it. Mm. The feeding of the 5,000, those loaves and fish were transactional, but there was a supernatural blessing on it. We go on and on with this. There's supernatural blessing on the transactional. Devotional money is money you give to the Lord. But it doesn't go. It doesn't leave your life. It just multiplies. It goes ahead of you. And then transactional money is the way you get money. So your business should be giving devotionally. I want to challenge you now. Start dreaming about your business giving hundreds of thousands of dollars away, millions of dollars away devotionally. We have partners of ours that are doing so well in their transactional businesses, multi, multi-millionaires. Why? Because they're devotionally giving to the kingdom, giving to people in the kingdom, praise God. It's so important that you do that. Give into the kingdom of God, give devotionally, and watch what happens to the transactional side of things, praise God. This is business supernaturally, and I want every single one of your businesses to increase supernaturally, supernatural increase in your business in Jesus' name. We're going to pray for you in a minute. And then I'm also going to answer your questions. We have some good questions coming now. So we're going to answer your questions. But I'm telling you, this is, this is in, 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 exciting. I know a lot of the time in these lives, we get really technical with business things. Last, last time, I think we talked about negotiation. I'm going to teach you about buying, the laws of buying and selling and increasing value and things like that. So that's some nuts and bolts, practical things. But this is very important because this applies to any business. Anybody, actually, who's, who wants to make money, whether you're employed, self-employed, a business owner, investor, whatever you do, you can apply this. You apply God's devotional money. You give God devotional money and he'll give you transactional money, praise God. So Carly's got a picture. Got a little diagram. Come on. Got a That's little awesome. diagram here. I don't know if you can see this. Yeah, so this is how this works, right? It's probably backwards for you. But this is money that this is money that comes to you, right? This could, it mm -hmm. could come to you through a job. It could mm -hmm. come to you through, you know, an inheritance mm -hmm. or a bonus or a commission or whatever. However money comes to you, you know, it could come through you know, your um, social security check, money, mm -hmm. money is coming mm -hmm. to you, money that comes into your household. And then you give devotionally, yeah. right? So maybe you give to your church, maybe you give to a ministry, you give a portion of that away. Mm -hmm. And then it starts on this cycle and it Come comes on. back to you as transactionally. Yeah. And guess what? Increased it's in the form of opportunities, but sometimes yeah. that, those opportunities then translate into money. And then we go again, the whole cycle starts again and again, and it yeah. goes around and around and around. And as it goes around, there's always more coming in and there's always Come more on. going out. It's kind of like the the cycle of life with finances, come on. right? Life good, cycle though. of finances. Did you just come up with that? I did. It's amazing. That's the Lord. That is, I like that. That's the Pretty Lord. Pretty simple. Giving Kyrie that idea. That really is two types of money, transactional money and devotional money. And I'm telling you, when you when you put this, when you start this system rolling, when you put the seed in the ground, the devotional money, it will mm -hmm. come back to you supernaturally pressed down. It will come back to you increase through transactional. Mm -hmm. We miss it in two departments. We either don't give the devotional and then we're waiting for our business to, to prosper transactionally, 
or we give devotionally and we don't realize there's a transactional section mm -hmm. to it. Let me finish with one more Bible story and then I'm, we're going to pray for you and answer your questions. But real quickly, I, I feel like I feel really led by the Holy Ghost. I wasn't going to share this, but I feel led by the Holy Ghost real quickly. Mark 4, this shows you how the kingdom of God works. I believe we're going to start at, where is it, 26 maybe? Let's find that story. Here we are, yeah. So this, Jesus is explaining how the kingdom of God works. This is how your business works when we're talking about supernatural increase. I want your businesses to be run supernaturally. That doesn't mean you disengage your brain. It means that Don't you pray over your brain. business. You pray over, in the Holy Ghost. You include God into your business. God will use your brain. He invented your brain and he'll give you insights. You still learn. You still be diligent. You still read books. You still re watch podcasts. You still educate yourself in that business arena. You still yeah. do everything you need to do, but you're doing it supernaturally now. So he says, this, Jesus, this is how the kingdom of God works. He said, the kingdom of God is like this. Verse 26. This is Mark 4, verse 26. Then we're going to pray for you and answer your questions. Mark 4, 26. The kingdom of God is if a man should scatter seed on the ground, and should sleep by night and rise by day. The seed should sprout and grow. He himself, the farmer himself, does not know how. This is interesting. For the earth yields crops by itself, first the blade, then the head, after that the full grain in the head. Verse 29, but when the grain ripens, immediately puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. Let me just tell you, when you give devotionally, you're putting seed in the ground, and what happens is that seed grows. It grows, but it comes back in a transactional form. And this farmer has to put the sickle in and harvest the increase. You mean I have to go and get the harvest? You've got to go and get the harvest. Some people don't know how to reap the harvest. So praise God for you guys watching on here. A lot of you are entrepreneurial. A lot of you have your own small businesses. A lot of you have this business mindset or you have this mindset of creating wealth. That is putting the sickle in into the harvest. See, some of you can give devotionally. Two ditches. Some of you are giving devotionally and you don't put the sickle in and the harvest just dies on the field and you never actually experience the harvest. And some of you are working so hard trying to harvest and putting the sickle in, but you haven't sown any seeds, so the harvest isn't coming up. Do you see that? There's two ditches. You can either sow lots of seeds, but forget to harvest it, or you can try and harvest a crop that you haven't sown seed for. I want you it's to prosper fruitless. supernaturally in your business, just like this widow woman did in 2 Kings 4. I want you to prosper supernaturally in your business so that lots of money comes into your business, and you take a portion of that money and sow it devotionally, mm -hmm. transformationally, and then guess what happened? God will bless you back transactionally through new business, new ways of doing things, new customers, new contracts. He'll bless you back. And guess what? You'll have even more to give and more to live off. And then more to give and more to live. This is a little bit like 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10. There's seed for the sower and bread to eat. You've got devotional money and you've got transactional money. I hope that helps you today. There's some good questions coming, Chloe. Some good questions here. Do you want to ask me some of these questions? Go ahead, start yeah. from the top. Ask yeah. some of these Michelle questions. Michelle Leon on YouTube. Hi, Michelle. Oh, I think we've already answered that one. Okay. Would a bonus be a transaction? Yes, yes a bonus yes. would be transactional, praise God. That's awesome. Carry on. Uh, Praveen says, would you recommend getting an MBA if one can afford the time and the money? Uh, you could do. That is a master's Mas in business administration. Master's in business administration. Yeah, you, you could do. You could do that. I would be very if careful. Led. Yeah, be very careful of education. Was paying a lot for education. First of all, I believe in cash flow and education where possible. Mm -hmm. And be careful when you get an education. If you get a very specific, narrow field of education, it can be hard to get work after that. A lot of the time, you can get that education in different ways. Now, some jobs, obviously, I want my doctor to be educated. Right. I want my lawyer to be educated. I don't want him educated. to just have a, you know, have a, a good go. heart and no. a fun sense of humour. He needs to actually know what he's doing. But a lot of these things, you can be educated on the job. You can be educated, you, you know, you can educate, get education by being mentored by someone and things like that. So there's more than one way to get this education. It depends what your goal is, Praveen. But um, I love education. I think... Our son's doing a business degree. Yeah, he's doing a business degree. I think educating yourself is a bit, one of the biggest investments you can make. In fact, the most important investment you can make is the investment in yourself. Because the more investment you do in yourself, the more you can create wealth and the more you can help others. Yeah. So I think so that I like really that. comes down to, you know, what do you feel like the Lord is leading you? Don't do something because mm -hmm. it's just a good idea. You know, mm -hmm. do something because it's a God idea because you've got um, you've got a passion for that and it's something that you want mm -hmm. to use afterwards. And I do know many people that go through university, get qualifications that don't end up using. Yeah. They're still paying for them. They don't even enjoy the field that they've got the qualification in. So make yeah. sure that's something that that you're passionate about and that you feel led and have peace to do. That's right. Lindsay says that she got a master's in a field that she doesn't even want to work in anymore. This is Lindsay on YouTube. And yeah. she felt like it was a huge waste of money. But an MBA is something, at least it pays more. Uh, but she says, pray about it. Amen. We need to pray. We need to be God-led by this. We need to be God-led. Heart, heart says, please pray for me. I'm desperate and discouraged. You need to get my book. Come on. I don't usually say this to people, but you need to get my book. Mm -hmm. That will encourage you. Yeah, and all is not lost. In, and pray in the Holy Ghost. Because Amen. you cannot be discouraged and pray in tongues at the same time. All is not okay. lost would be a great book for you. Some good tools Another, for you. Ask your questions. Put your questions in the comments and mm -hmm. our um, staff will feed them through. Go ahead, Gary. Amen. All right, where are we up to? Um, 
Mike says, so how can you can God bless you on an hourly job if they decided to do no raises? Should I start something on the side um, to open up for transactional blessings because I'm a giver? Well, that's a great question, Mike. First of all, don't limit God. Just because your company says they're not giving raises or they're not going to give you anymore, that doesn't mean God can't bless you through that. So when you go to work, bless your boss. Say, I thank you, Lord, this company is a generous company. I thank you, this, this company pays good. I thank you, my boss is generous. And, put, and work as unto the Lord. I believe it's Colossians 3, Verse 17 and verse 23 says, whatever you do, in work or do, do it as unto the Lord. So I believe when you go to work, Mike, even though you think there's no opportunities for growth, I believe God can give you opportunities for growth. Yeah, uh, Colossians 3, verse 17 and verse 23. So do it as unto the Lord. And guess what? They'll change the rules for you. They'll do something. I've had people yeah. say to me, actually, we've never done this in this company before. But I want to do this. Or actually, we, we don't understand why we're doing this. We want to do this for you. So there is opportunity there. And then also, Mike, as well as that. So don't give up on your work. Don't give up on the fact that you could be blessed through there, even it's though they say they can't. I feel like you need to yeah. hear this. That, yeah, come on. That, the, that, that hourly rate is not the ceiling come for on, you. Come on, Carly. That it's God's good. got opportunities to bless you. He's yeah. got ways to bless you outside of the limit Amen. of that hourly rate. So because good. ultimately, that job is not your source. That's right. That is. God's your source. So then also, so don't give up on that. Be praying blessings over that. God can give you a greater things through that. But then also, I love side hustles. We've never lived in mm -hmm. such a greater time that anybody can do a side hustle. It doesn't matter where you live, where you're from, what your education is. You've got an internet connection. You've got a cell phone. You can start a side hustle. And there is so many different ways of doing this. I teach a course on one little side hustle you could do, which is buying and selling things. Nowadays, with Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, Etsy, you know, Amazon, all those things. You can buy and sell things online, eBay. You can have your own eBay store and sell around the world and they take care of it. You can do all these things online now. It's amazing. You can you can start a, an education service where you're actually helping people do things. They'll pay you for that. You know, an experts market. There's all different types of things you can do online. So I believe online is a great way of starting a side hustle. I always tell people, start with your hobbies. It's good to start with your hobbies. Start with something you already have an interest in and go from there. But you can have a side hustle, Mike, because you only work for maybe eight hours a day. So I'm not talking about neglecting your, your family or anything, but you know you've got a couple of hours free every day, at least, that you can do a side hustle. And if you've got a busy life, maybe you've got you know a family, maybe you've got kids, a wife, and you want to spend time with them, and your time is limited, just get up an hour earlier. It's amazing. No one's going to complain. Your wife or your kids mm. are not going to complain if you get up at 4 a.m. and be selfish. If you're selfish at 4 a.m. from 4 a.m. to 5 a.m. No you can be selfish from 4 a.m. to 5 a.m. or 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. No one cares. And you can work on your own side hustle. An hour a day can do amazing things. An hour a day you can have your own side hustle going also, and make though, some extra you know, money. He's, he's, he's a giver. So there's a part of this where if my intention is to simply to give, Mm -hmm. I'm going to demand the seed because mm -hmm. God gives seed to the sower and his word doesn't lie. So if I've got a need that I want to give into, if I've got a good work that I want to give into and I don't have a seed for that, I'm like, Jesus, you've got a problem. Right. right? Lord, you've got mail because there, there is a, I want to, I want to be the channel through which the supply comes for that good work. You've told me I have an abundance for every good work. Come I on. see a good work and I want an abundance to give to it. Come on. And you start declaring it out and you start, to, you know, be specific how much that you want to give you. And then when that seed comes to you, you make sure that you keep your word Come on. and you give exactly what you said you were going to give and see your more's going to come to you. Come on. More's so going to come God. to you. Another good question here from uh, uh, Sylvie. Sylvie, I believe there. Sylvie said, I saw a lot. I sew. I sew a lot. Sorry. I sew a lot devotionally, but no business because of years of sickness. So how do I get the return, please? Okay. You know, I, I'm, I we have great sympathy for your sickness. We speak healing over you so you won't yeah. be sick anymore. Praise God. But I'm telling you, you can do things in whatever situation you are. You know, I had a friend of mine who was blown up by a Vietnam landmine. He's completely blind, cannot see light and day. He has nearly all his fingers missing on both hands, and he has both his legs are completely gone. So he's, he's uh, in a wheelchair, he's got, has no legs, hardly any fingers, and completely blind. Yet he had a full-time job, or at least a part-time job, and we knew him, and he worked, and he was able to use digital programs to voice activate things and stuff, and he worked, and he was able to be mm -hmm. a, a, an executive assistant to someone and did a great job. Mm -hmm. There's a way you can do things. Don't use sickness as an excuse. I'm just yeah. saying there's something you could do. There's some way you can contribute online. What can you do? Can, that's right. What can you do? Mm -hmm. There's things you can do. Not everything is things you can't do. There's things you can Joseph yeah. Z's on here, my brother, Joseph Z. If you haven't checked out Z Ministries, check out Z Ministries. 7 a.m. Mountain Time every week. early for that one. Z Live, praise the Lord. You're going to get some live interaction. A great prophet right there. You're going to be blessed. All right. Sarah says, 
Uh, how do we know what seed and what's not? We have money saved for a house, but sometimes we wonder if we are supposed to be sowing from that set aside money. Thank you. Pray about it, Sarah, you know, and make sure it's on God's radar. You know, one time we was in a situation where we'd saved up, this was many years ago, maybe 15 years ago, we'd saved up $10,000 for a down payment on a house. Mm -hmm. and But we'd had a dream about giving away $10,000. We said, what would it be like to give away $10,000 and $100,000 mm -hmm. and a million dollars? So we already had that on our radar. And I was praying the Holy Ghost once and the Lord told me, give that $10,000 to that missionary. He gave me a word. So we went ahead and gave that down payment to that missionary. And in the natural, it seemed like we'd just blown the chance of getting our own house in this country because we've given the down payment away. But guess what? God's never trying to take money from you. He's trying to get more to you. He's not a taker, he's a giver. So if God asks you to give that money away, it's because he's trying to get more to you. And the, if the money you have isn't enough, it's because you're looking at your harvest you're looking at your seed, not your harvest. Mm -hmm. If the money you have right now is not enough, it's because you're looking at your seed, not your harvest. So anyway, we sowed that $10,000 to that missionary. I remember giving him the check, and he took the check, and he looked at it. He started crying. And as he took it away from me, I started crying. But I tell you, on the, I got in my truck. You weren't believing for harvest. You just wanted the refund. I just wanted the refund. That's <laughs> when you know it's a generous gift. On the, that was our total money we'd saved up for down payment. On the way back home in my truck, the Lord spoke to me. I was, I was, just, I was just thanking God. I was like, thank you, God, thank you, God. And the presence of the Lord entered my truck. It was like Jesus was sat next to me and he said, thank you, Ashley. And I'm telling you what, I cried. He said, thank you, Ashley. I'm telling you, God was looking for someone who's a willing vessel to give that money away. When you release money like that, it does something powerful. And I tell people this, your generous giving, your giving, especially generous giving when it's above and beyond, your generous giving will bring you things money could never buy. Your generous giving will bring you things money could never buy. And guess what happened? We gave those savings away. It was just a few years later. We had a house in Colorado Springs, a beautiful house, and we owned it for cash. We did cash. So God turned that down payment into a complete house. And I'm telling you, God can do that for you too. He's going to get more to you, not from you. So if you start having the idea about giving it away, it's probably not coming from the devil. That's it's right. definitely not coming from your flesh. It's probably coming from Come God. On. So when God speaks to you, be on, let, let that, uh, right. you know, don't, don't, don't go, I can't hear you, Lord, because God wants to take, get money from you because he's trying to get more to you. Amen. Amen. All right, Come I'm on. going to answer this one person okay. because they keep commenting, okay? Uh, this is Hart Jamora, right? Um, and you're in the Middle East, and I see that you have, you're in a desperate situation. You mm. have some need there and everything else. He says, I haven't, can't get legal assistance, can't mm. defend myself, haven't got anything, four years jobless. Let me tell you, you're not defenseless. Come on, Carly. You're not empty-handed. You just don't know who you are yet. Come on. All right, and I have Amen. good news for you. Come on. There's a victor on the inside of you. You just need to know how big your God is. You need to get one of Kyle's right? confession cards. Look. And this is a problem because get everything everything that's coming out of your mouth here is very negative. And it may be a fact right now, but it's not going to help you. Come on. So there's some free resources that aren't going to cost you anything. And uh, if you will be diligent to do to take this advice, I'm telling you, we've seen it time and time again, yeah. your situation is going to change. Come on. You go on our website. Now, praise God, you have the internet. Yeah, so you do have something. You have internet. You have something in your hand. You go on the internet to our website. Teradez.com. Right? And you sign up for Power Academy. Now, Power Academy is free, and it's an online Bible school. Okay, and then you get plugged in. You get plugged into our ministry. You get the and you educate yourself until the word of God on the inside of you changes the picture of who you are. Come on, and you will see that the Lord is your defender. Come on, He is your protector. Amen. He is your provider. Hallelujah. You do have faith with God, faith with man, and good opportunities. You are more than a conqueror, and you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. That's who you are right now. That's who you are. Come on. Okay. Come on. So you take my advice, and I'm telling you, we will stand with you. And you can yeah. phone up, and we'll pray with you, and stand with you, and. Agree Agree with you. Yeah, come on. Okay, but we're gonna Get we're that gonna to start with. we're gonna hit you with some truth, and come we're gonna on. love you through this. But we're not gonna pander to it. No. Okay, so we're gonna stand with you in faith and encourage you. I love Debbie's. Our Academy. Good I love you. Debbie's testimony. She said, "I've been had a cleaning business for 22 years, yes. and now I'm partially retired. So God's opened up the door for me to have a pet sitting business. There's a lot of money in pet sitting. If I was a single man right now, I'd be house sitting and pet sitting. I tell you, there's a lot of money to be made in that. Yeah. So she's she's uh, she's pet sitting. She also has her own crocheting skills, and she makes Christmas gifts. That's awesome. That's she awesome. makes hats for the homeless, and she also sells some things. Everything she makes, she gives away, and God keeps increasing her. Debbie, I love that testimony. That's awesome. Praise God. That is so good, man. I want to pray for everyone before we uh, run out of time because I don't want to keep people too long. Uh, maybe one more. Have you already read this one? Um, go on, one more. Go on, more. Lindsay says... I oh, know, we got that one. We had that one. No, we haven't. No, no, no. Got that one? no. If God is our source, should we ask for a raise or have salary requirements for a new job or just leave it up to God? It's up to you. I personally don't ask for raises. I let the Lord 
um, increase but me, but there's nothing negotiate. wrong with us. Yeah. People do these days. There's nothing wrong. Actually, in fact, the one time in that when I was um, contracting for that car sales, I told them what I wanted. I said, I want this much commission on every single car sold. So yeah. I told them what I wanted. There's nothing wrong with that. Know your worth. You are valuable. Yeah. And let God be your source and let God promote you. But yeah, there's nothing wrong with asking for a raise. But make sure if you ask for a raise, you, you deserve you it. You deserve it. You deserve it, yeah. You can't just ask for a raise because, raise because you can't manage your finances. So here's what people right? do. Here's people make this. <laughs> you yeah, need to prove your worth. Lots of people ask for raises, cap in hand. Oh, I can't feed my family. I no. can't pay my bills. Well, maybe you've made poor financial decisions. There's one maybe reason. You, maybe there's reasons for that, but that's not your employer's role to fix. Yeah. Okay. So make sure before Absolutely. you ask for a raise that you have taken on new responsibilities yeah. or you've taken on new tasks, new duties, or you're supervising more people. Yeah. There needs to be something to justify the reason why you should be paid more than you are right now other than you just want to. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, let me say this as well. When you ask for a raise, it should be nothing to do with your personal situation. It should right. be what you've done to the company to demand that raise. And here's yep. what the mistake, listen to me employed people, people who are employed right now, listen to me. Here's the mistake you make. You think, if I got this raise, I would make this company this extra money. No, 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 no. Start making the company extra money. Start excelling in your job. Start operating like that higher pay level and then let yeah. them catch you up with your salary. In other words, Be start doing that already. Be excellent in your job. Do, everything, do it as unto the Lord. I've already said this, but Colossians 3, verse 17 and verse 23, great verses, because whatever you do, do it as unto the Lord. Remember, the word for worship and work is the same in the Hebrew. Do it as unto the Lord. Do it as unto worship. Work harder than anyone else. Nowadays, it's not that difficult. If you show up on time and keep your word, Man, you've already outdone 80% of the working people. I'm telling you, so you do that and start producing extra money. I guarantee if you start producing that company extra money, the chances of you getting an increase are phenomenally more because you're already proving your worth. So I love paying people well if they're making me money. If you make me money, man, I'd love to pay you well, praise God. So one more question maybe and then... Uh, okay, Juliana says, what about blockages? We've had things for sale, but they aren't selling. Are these th are things that people want? or need, but they fall through? Well, there's a few reasons why things aren't selling. I have a whole course on this, but if things aren't selling, it might be because it's in, in front of the wrong audience. So maybe you're using the wrong median, so, you know, medium. So maybe you're trying to sell wrong something, platform. wrong platform. Maybe you're trying to sell something on a, in a garage sale that should be on eBay, or you're trying to sell something on Etsy that should be on Craigslist, the wrong platform. The second thing is it's overpriced. So you're asking too much money. The third thing could be the wrong season, the wrong seasonality, the wrong market, the wrong place, you're exposing it to the wrong people. So there's some things you can do, you can tweak to actually, it could be too cheap even. Some things are too cheap and people discard them. So there's things you can do. I have a course on this called Buy, Sell, Repeat. It's all about buying and selling things. It's on our website, Buy, Sell, Repeat. In fact, if you want this during this live, email in and say that I was watching the live and Ashley said I could have it for 50%. So you can have it for, for the $100 instead of the $200. Go ahead, it's, a, it's an intense course. It's 20 lessons, there's cheat sheets, there's videos on there, and it'll show you the A to Z from buying and selling. Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, all these different things, it will help you. And it'll, there's a whole, I think there's two whole lessons on why isn't my item selling? What do I have to do to make my item sell? Why isn't my item selling? So that's a good question. And, um, you know, you've got all those technical, all those technical, Ashley does all the technical stuff, right? And they're all awesome. And I just want to add a little bit of faith to that too, okay? Come because on. I just believe that anyone that comes to my house is going home with whatever I'm selling. Come on. And I don't, I'm not interested in tire kickers and looky loos, right? Looky loos. So if you, yeah, looky -loos. I'm like, I'm just like, Lord, bring me the buyer. Yeah. Just bring me the buyer. I don't got time for anyone else. Just bring me the buyer. Bring me the divine connections, the divine yeah. relationships. And um, I just set my faith that um, that, that that's that's the way that's going to be. And you know what? You can you can speak your faith into these situations. And even if there is some spiritual blockage and the enemy is trying to hold up your you know your your blessing, you know what? You can just pray your way through that. You're bigger than that. That's right. Come on. I love what uh, Bulbul says, and also Robin. Bulbul says I confess the confession card from Carly every morning, ever since I got hold of it. The first thing in the morning, and it changes my mind. And it, it makes me think differently. And then Robin says, I have the confession card in my bathroom and in my workroom, and I see it all throughout the day, and it reminds me of who I am. That's so good. You know, we, we use a physical mirror to see what we look like in the flesh, but we need the spiritual mirror to see who we are in, in the spirit, the real world. So get this confession card. It's completely free of charge. Go to terrordays.com. Get your confession card, praise the Lord. Grace, we've already answered the question about being employed, so rewind about 20 minutes, and you'll rewind. get that yes. answer. Praise the Lord. Hi, Trishka. That's <laughs> awesome. Lana's on here. Hi, Lana. Praise all the peeps on here. Julianne's on here. Amen. So, um, we should pray for people. We should pray for people. Um, yeah, email at Eve and you get the 50% discount. That's right, on that on that buy, sell, repeat. And uh, real quick, if you've just joined us, Business Supernaturally, if you're looking for somewhere to sow devotionally, I'm just saying, 
our property fund right now, teradiz.com forward slash HQ. We are believing God for about an extra three hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars. We've had seven hundred, almost seven hundred and fifty thousand come in supernaturally mm-hmm. since April. Thank you, thank you, thank you, partners. I know you've been so f- faithful in, t- in giving. If you want to give into the HQ project, I'm telling you, God's getting the money to us. We're going to move in in a few days, but we still have a lot of construction work to do. We still have some bills to pay. We're believing to pay cash for everything, no loans. So go to teradiz.com forward slash HQ and sow your seed from your business into that project. It's just it's a smart worth it. investment. It's a smart investment. When you, when you put your money um, and you take something that's transactional, something that comes through the world, Come on. something worldly, something carnal like money, and you yeah. place it in the kingdom, you change the rate of exchange. Yeah. Now you've taken something that it, you know just has an earthly value and you've given it an eternal um, yeah. value. So you've yeah. taken something that's temporary and you've made it into an eternal weight of glory. And yeah. that exchange rate, guess what it is? It's it's 30, 60, 100 fold. 100 fold, baby. 100 now, you don't fold. get those Limitless. percentage returns in the, ki- in no. the, in the, in the world. worldly kingdom. 100 fold You only get return. those in the kingdom of God. And Jesus said, in this life, you'll receive mm-hmm. 100 fold in this life. You don't have to wait for heaven. In this life, you can receive the 100 fold. Yeah. Joseph said, is there any way you can expand my Amazon business? Get my course by, so repeat, that'll really help you. There's too much to go into. Um, Elaine says, um, how, do I get, how do we get our harvest to come to us by putting in the sickle? That's putting your hands to something. The work yeah. of your hands, whether you're employed, self-employed, whether you're employed and you have a side hustle, whether you're an investor, whether you're a business owner, put your hands to something, whatever you put your hands to. What is in your hands? What's in your house? What do you have available to you? Do it as unto the Lord. That is put it in the sickle, Mm. in the harvest. Go into work. Good things happen when you go to work. Good things happen when you put your hands to something. Don't just sit around and wait for God to bless you. God's already given you the power to get wealth. I started with this verse. I'll end with it. Deuteronomy 8.18. He has given you the power to get wealth. Amen. You know why? So that he can establish his covenant so you can be a giver, praise God. So how yeah. exciting. Man, I can't wait to next week's uh, um, Business Supernaturally, praise God. We want to pray for you right now. Yeah. We believe in supernatural impartation yes. when it comes to business. And Amen. We, we're going to do Power Hour on Thursday. Yeah, Kai's going to be Power Hour. So we're going to change. Thursdays at 1 o'clock. The Power Hour is going to be most Thursdays, 1 p.m. Mountain yes. Time with Carly. She'll be praying for the sick. It's going to be powerful. If you know anyone who needs healing, join her. If you know anyone who likes good biblical teaching, faith teaching, then join Carly and I will, on Thursdays. I will try. I got carried away last time. I did like Power 2 hours. but Power 2 hours. Uh, I try and really do one hour. really worked too much. I try and do one hour. We're already we're over already an over. hour. But in Jesus' name, I thank you for Amen. every person watching today. Lord, first we want to pray for the partners of Terrodiz Ministries and those giving today in Terrodiz Ministries. I call this offering, it's like we're taking up an offering. I call this offering blessed in Jesus' name. Yeah. If and you're sowing a give, seed today, um, yeah. you can hold it up or if yeah. you're about to do it online. I don't yeah. know, do, right do, sowing. Sow some, hold something up that represents your seed. And type in the comments, sowing, S-O-W-I-N-G, so we know who you are. Say sowing today. You're going to sow a seed sowing today, teradiz.com forward slash give. I'm sowing today. I'm going to pray for you right yeah. now. In Thank Jesus' you, name, every seed sown, into Terrodiz Ministries, into this building project, into the HQ. I thank you, Lord, for people. Thank you, Lindsay, for sowing. I thank you, Lord, for people's mm. debt to be released. I Amen. thank you, Lord, for new transactional wealth Amen. coming your way, new business ideas. Thank you, Christina, Amen. for sowing. New business ideas. Robin, thank, thank you, you for Lord. sowing. Bobo, thank, thank you for you sowing. Lord. You're going to get Lord. increased. Cindy, thank you for sowing. Thank Jack, Lord. thank you for sowing. Right now, we, we take these seeds and we, and we speak to them and we command them to be transformed from transactional gifts into devotional... Yeah. devotional returns thank in you, Jesus Lord. name Amen. Lord I thank you that these seeds Keisha will go Bada, exactly that yeah. they will prosper in the things thank that you, you are sending them to Amen. and they will not return to us void Increase. but they will fulfill everything which these seeds are sent to accomplish Increase today in Jesus thank name. you Lord Increase on Penny thank you Lord Increase yeah. On Darlene, increase on Ashley, increase on Debbie, increase on Mario and Sandy, increase on Lana, hallelujah, increase on Cindy, increase on Wendy Ann, increase on Jack, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. You know, uh, Mario and Sandy. The Lord says, you have been so faithful. Thank you, Lord. You have endured hardships. You've endured Amen. persecutions. Thank You've you, had people that should have stood with you that didn't. Right. That, um, that have actually taken from your life Thank rather you, than Lord. added to your life. And you have loved them anyway. You have loved people that have been unlovable. You have loved people that have done things that are unforgivable. And God sees your heart and he sees your faithfulness. And there is an eternal reward coming to you. And you're going to see that in this life too. Hallelujah. You're going to see that your children's children are reaping, are going to reap the harvest of the things that you have sown in this life. Thank you, Lord. They mean they're going to reap in joy things that you had to sow in tears. Thank you, Lord. They're not going to have to go through some of the things that you've had to go through. Thank you, But there is going to, there is a return. And the Lord, right now, I just see that the Lord say, I am rebuking the devourer for you. Come on, that's right. 
I rebuke Jesus you. Mary and Sandy, the Lord is rebuking the devourer for you. Thank you, Lord. Thank Hallelujah. You, Lord. Thank Blessing you, Jesus. Hello, Jesus. Sherry, you are blessed. Increase on that Jesus. seed sown. Thank Little Pink Casa, increase you. on that seed sown. Thank you, Amy, increase. Volunteer, increase on that seed sown. Joseph, increase. Lana, increase. Michelle, increase on that seed sown. Yeah. Heart, increase on that seed sown. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bulba, increase. Sarah, increase on that seed sown. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Increase on all these seed sown. I thank you. Lord, we just agree right now together that that property, Territories Ministries H uh, Headquarters, Territories Ministries HQ, is going to be paid for completely in cash. All the construction, everything needs to be done, mm. paid for for your glory, Lord. And we're going to see more of the gospel getting out than ever before. We're going to have more space to make television, more space yeah. to make social media. I thank you for more people getting healed and set free mm. through that ministry headquarters in Jesus' name. So we just call it Amen. paid for cash right Amen. now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. We call that road Hallelujah. fixed. Amen. We thank call you, that Lord. building finished. Thank you, we Jesus. Call, yeah. We call that, um, that, that cabin finished. Thank you, Lord. Yes. We call everything thank done you, that needs to be done Amen. in Jesus' name. Thank, thank you, Lord, Lord. that Hallelujah. you help us across the finish line. Amen. So every yeah. business right now, every small business, every business right now, thank you, Lindsay, yeah, paid for. Every business right now, paid in full. Amen, Lana. Every business right now represented, even people that have their employer, the works of their hands, I pray supernatural increase over you in Jesus' name. Mm. I thank you, Lord, that just like you increase that widow woman's oil, you're going to increase our mm. knowledge, you're going to increase our business, you're going to increase our customer base, increase mm. contracts, increase rentals. I thank you, Lord, increase yeah. on investments, increase on bonds, on stocks. I thank you for increase on real estate, on land, on buildings, on, on service industry, more contracts, more, more customers. I thank you, Lord, for favor in Jesus' name, favor in the oh, marketplace you, right there, now. I see, some, I see somebody with student debt Hallelujah. being forgiven. Student debt being student forgiven debt right now. Tuition being Hallelujah. paid, yes, tuition so. being paid, and debt thank being forgiven. Jesus. I thank Kisha you, Lord, that you're gonna. There's somebody with medical debt. You have medical mm -hmm. debt from procedures, mm. but the Lord's like, no, you don't understand. You're gonna Come be able on. to pay for this on pennies on the dollar. Thank you, Jesus. It's yeah, gonna we be believe such right a discounted now. rate that thank people. You, but people, it's almost Kisha like Santa. you can afford. You've just got that spare. That's yeah. not even gonna cause you to, to strain yeah. over it. Come on. And that it was been. It, I, I see somebody thank with you, medical debt that's just been this big weight that's been holding them down. Come on. Just like a like a millstone around your mm -hmm. neck, but the Lord is breaking. He says the anointing Come on. is the anointing that breaks Hallelujah. the yoke. The fatness you, that breaks the yoke. I think that's a Isaiah thank 10, you, 27, somewhere right there. Thank you, but, Lord. But thank you, Lord, that you're anointed. Santa. You have anointed them. Come on. There is people literally that you have you have debt that is thank that you, is Jesus. entangled you. Kisha and it is, is holding Santa. you back. It's limiting your creativity. It's limiting your options. It's thank even you, it's even limiting your movement. Thank you, Lord. How you move around and travel and different things. But the Lord says, no, you don't understand. It may seem enormous. It may seem like a mountain. But Jesus paid for you to be free. Come on. He paid Hallelujah. for you to be free, That's right. not to Come go on. back into bondage. And he's gonna, he's setting you free. This Come is on. gonna be a supernatural event. Hallelujah. He's setting you free. You Medical do not debt be gone listen right to me. Now. You Jesus do not name. deserve this. Come on. This You're gonna grace. get what you do not deserve. Grace, grace. You did not Thank even you, sow to this one. Thank you, Lord. Grace. But you're gonna get it anyway, just Thank because you, he loves you. Thank this you, is the grace of God. Amen. But here's what I hear him saying now. Now don't put yourself back under that bondage again. Come on. Right? The anointing breaks the yoke, but don't right. put yourself back under there again. Come on. Because it was for freedom that Christ Amen. has set you free. He's going to Hallelujah. show you how to make better decisions. He's going to show you how to make Thank better money, Lord. manage money better. Keep he's going to show you how to plan to. better. Hallelujah. But the, the, his grace is there for yes. you right now. Amen. His grace is there for you thank right you now. Lord. Say, thank you, Lord, that I receive what yes. I could not earn. In Jesus' name. I receive today what I could not earn. Amen. And then what, what do we say? We say, thank you, Lord. Yeah, amen. Thank Just you. thank you. Thank you, Lord, that you, you take care of even the every little detail. Come on. Every Thank lady, you, I see letters in the mail, physical letters Keisha arriving. Letters in the in the mail that that, that 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 Amen. say the word cancelled. Cancelled. Come on. Cancelled. Debt release right now in Jesus' name. Supernatural debt release. Medical bills. Student debt. Car payments, mortgages, debt release. Right, there's a supernatural yeah. anointing right now. It's right now. Right now, there's a supernatural anointing on this offering. I'm just yeah. telling you. Shinnacle, people say, Shinnacle, "Why are you saying Shinnacle, that?" I'm saying it because I can sense it. I know when there's a working of miracles. There's a working of miracles, Thank you, Lord. and it's and it's going to come back to you in the form of released debt. 
cancelled debt in Jesus' name. Trishka, thank you for sowing. I believe you and your husband and your baby that generational blessings yeah. are coming your way in Jesus' name. Generational blessings. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. We love you too, Lana. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Sarah, student debt be gone in Jesus' name. Yeah, little cat, little pink cats, your, your medical debt to be gone in Jesus' name. Someone's getting healed Thank in their you, left Lord. foot. And I hear the Lord say, you need to put your best foot forward. Amen, come on. You've been, um, you've been discouraged, you've been down to, you've been disappointed, yeah. and it's and it's literally, uh, you've stopped moving forward, you've stopped mm -hmm. progressing, mm -hmm. and part of that is, um, as that 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 depression has even opened the door for sickness, for illness in your life. And the enemy is so sneaky, he'll use whatever inroad he can. Right. And I see a problem with your foot and you're walking, but God's not only healing you in your foot. I speak strength back into Come your on. left foot right now. Strength Thank back you, into your foot, into your bones to line up, straighten up, Thank and walk you, without without pain. Thank you, Lord. All the yes, the the soft tissues and the ligaments and the bones to become strong and fully functioning in Jesus' name. But this is now put your best foot forward. Come on. Put your in Jesus' best name, forward. thank you, Lord. Go Healing. take the land. Go Increase. possess the land. Come every on. every place that Keep the sole of your foot there. treads now belongs to the Lord. Amen. Come it on. belongs to the Lord. You carry the favor of God Come on. Thank you, with Jesus. you. Hallelujah. You carry thank you, Lord. 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 Lord. I thank you for favor of everyone watching now. Amen. Favor of every sower. I thank you. Would you promise to give increase? Mm. I thank you, you promise to increase. And right now, in Jesus' name, look at that, uh, Lana says her foot has pain and swelling. Be gone right now. Pain Amen. and swelling in the foot, be gone right now. In Perfectly Jesus healed name. foot right in now. Jesus' name. Immediately. Immediately. Immediate. Right now, healing. Mm. Right now. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for favor. I thank you, Lord, for increase. I thank you for divine appointments. I thank you for Kairos moments. I thank you for supernatural increase mm. and the grace of God is going to abound. I thank you for an abundance. The grace of God. God is able to make all grace. I'm going to declare this over you right now. Receive this right now. God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you have in all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. That's what I'm, that's that. what I'm speaking over you right that's now. That's for me too. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Man, can't wait to see you Thursday, 1 p.m. Mountain Time. Kylie's going to be on yeah, Thursday, I'm 1 p.m. Mountain Time. Anna, welcome. Too. First time ever on our live stream. Oh, Hi, Anna. Awesome. Welcome, welcome. So this is, this is. I'm telling you, we love you. We're going to be praying for you throughout the week. You know, our partners of Territory's Ministries, we, we have a list of them, and we pray for our partners every day for increase in Jesus' name. We pray for your protection. We pray for your provision. So thank you for joining us. Two days from now, Thursday. Oh, little pink case says my come left on. ankle is healed. It Amen. just popped. Praise come the on. Lord. Now put your best foot forward. Best foot forward. Come, come on. on. Uh, That's I'm your left you. foot. Amen. In large, you're going to have a large territory. I like that yeah. word. In large territory. So in two days' time, Thursday, 1 p.m. Mountain Time, Kylie's going to be live. She's going to be power hour. She's going to be praying for the sick. You don't want to miss that. Praise the Lord. Who knows where she'll be because we're moving. And it's going to be awesome. Love you too. And um, next week, Tuesday, 1 p.m., I'll be live again with another Business Supernaturally. Love your mum and dad. Mum and dad are on here. Yes, Everyone's thanks. watching on here. Love you all too. Appreciate you all. Thanks for joining us. Remember, if you want to sew into the into the ministry headquarters, yep. you better hurry up because we're going to get it paid off completely Well, at this rate, I'm telling and you, you there's an anointing. To, you won't have a chance to sew into it. If you want Do to sew into it, you can. Do .com forward slash HQ and you can see the videos of it and everything else, the progress yep. we've made and you can sew into there. Thank you for sewing. Thank you. We really appreciate every single one of you sewing into that and thank you for joining us and thank you for partners and we will see you in two days' time and I'll see you in one week's time in Business Supernaturally in a week's time. So love you all. Bye. Bless you. Bless you all. And YouTube, thank you for joining us. Remember, thumbs up, YouTube. We ain't got enough thumbs yet, so keep keep hitting the thumbs up there. We want to see as many thumbs as we can. We, I think we can increase the thumbs. So if you haven't pressed the thumbs up yet, go to the top, press the thumbs up, and also you can press share. Take that link and share it with your friends. Post it on your they Facebook. <laughs> text it. Email it. Uh, you know, send it by carrier pigeon, whatever you want to do. But make sure that you make sure that you uh, share this, praise God. If you want to share our YouTube with anyone, you could just tell them to go to teradez.tv. If you go to teradez.tv on any browser, it will drop right onto our YouTube channel right here. So thank you all. We love you. Check out our other programs. You have unplugged programs. You have abundant life programs. You have power hour. Power we Academy. Boot camp boot camps coming up. Starting on September 12th. And yep. we've extended the registration for people that are interested to register by September 1st. Yeah, so September to give 1st. A little bit more time. That's so right. So go ahead and register for boot camp. You'll be blessed. But anyway, we love you. We appreciate YouTube. We'll see you next time. Bye.